Hello, my name is Olivia Brin. I am a member of the Iowa tribe of Kansas and Nebraska, and I live outside of Kansas City. You may recognize the name of our tribe as we gave our name to the state of Iowa. We actually call ourselves the Iowas, but we are legally known as the Iowa tribe of Kansas and Nebraska. The type of folk art that I practice is a style of beading called two needle applique. Two needle applique has been passed down through generations of Iowa Indians. For this project, you will need stiffened white felt, beeswax, which is available in a block, or you can purchase it in this holder that makes it really easy to wax your thread, two size 10 beading needles, Nymo thread, this is size D, three different colors of size 11O check seed beads. These are also called size 11 and I've got them in navy blue, turquoise, and cheyenne pink. To finish your piece you will also need E6000 and something to spread it with such as a popsicle stick or an old paintbrush. You'll need scissors, a shallow bowl, a pen or a pencil, I'll be using a Sharpie today so you can see my outlines very clearly. You'll also need access to a printer with black ink and regular computer paper, as well as a bright window or a tracing box so that you can trace your design onto your felt. Your first step will be to print out your design whatever size you want it to be. I made mine three and one quarter inches because I plan on making mine a patch. Next, you'll take your design and you'll trace it onto your felt, which I've already done off camera. You'll cut that out and then you'll cut out a second piece of felt the same size as that initial piece of felt. This will eventually be your backing. The second step is to cull your beads. Pick a color for your outline and go ahead and pour some of those beads into your bowl. Once you've done so, look through your bowl and see if you find any that are larger or smaller than the average size bead. You'll want to set those aside. You'll also want to look for any that may have a hole that is too small for your needle and thread to pass through, any that are misshapen, or any that are broken. These are looking pretty good, but if you have any, make sure you set them aside. The smaller size beads that you find and set aside will be especially useful when you get into your piece. They'll be very helpful to fill in tiny little parts that you can't get into with a normal size bead. You'll want to repeat this process each time you change a color. You'll also want to repeat the process if you add any beads to the bowl. Next you're going to take two feet of your Nymo thread and cut it off. It doesn't have to be exactly two feet, but most people find that they enjoy working with approximately two feet of thread at a time. You're going to repeat this process so you have two equally long lengths of thread, one for each of your needles. The end of my thread here looks a little strange, so I'm going to trim it so it's nice and crisp. Next, thread your needles. If you find you're having a hard time threading your needles, try twisting the end of the thread so that it goes through the eye easier. If it's still not working for you, you can try trimming the thread at a 45 degree angle. That angle will help it get through the eye of the needle easier. You will need one thread per needle. Each of your needles will perform a different function. One will be your stringing needle and the other will be your tacking needle. Pick up one of your needles and find the two ends of the thread. You'll wanna tie those thread ends together, either in a normal knot or you can use my way by twisting it around your finger and then rolling it off, and then pulling that knot tight. My way creates kind of a dramatic knot, so I'm just working it smaller. Next, trim up the tails of your knot. This is your stringing needle. You will use this needle to pick up beads from your bowl. You can always figure out which one it is when you're working on your project by looking at the knot. If it's tied with two pieces together, it's your stringing needle. Next, we'll be working on your tacking needle. The tacking needle is used to tack down strings of beads. 
We do not double up the thread on this one, but instead have a shorter tail and a longer tail. As I run it through my fingers, you'll see the shorter tail pop through. And then we're going to tie a knot in the longer tail. You can tie a regular knot or the knot that I showed you earlier. If you're tying a regular knot though, tie three or four of them so that they won't slip through the felt. I messed up my knot a little bit, so I'm tying a second one. Once you're happy with your knot, go ahead and pull it tight and then trim up the tail. After you do that, we're going to go ahead and wax up our threads. Grab your beeswax and one of your needles and threads. If you're using a puck like this, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. If you have a block of wax, I'll show that now. Pretend that my hand is a block of wax. You're going to take your thread and push it against the wax with your thumb as you draw it across the wax. Similarly, if you're using a puck, draw it between some of the teeth. You want to make sure these are nice and well coated as it keeps the threads nice and protected and from fraying. Repeat this with your other thread and as needed throughout your project. Now we get started. Grab your stringing needle. You're going to push it up through the back of the felt, wherever you prefer to start. I'm going to start here as I like to start where there's a lot going on. I've missed it there. Just try again until you get the right spot. Once you've done that, go ahead and pull that thread through. You'll have a little knot here on the back. Flip your piece back over and use your needle, this is your stringing needle, to pick up four beads. You can pick up more, but I'm just going to start and demonstrate with four. After you've picked up your preferred number of beads, string them further down the thread until they're up against the felt. You want to push them up against the felt so that they're nice and snug using your thumbnail. For right now, you are finished with your stringing needle. Now, pick up your tacking needle. Take your tacking needle and bring it up from the back of your felt. You are aiming for the spot right next to your string of beads on the left-hand side between the first and the second beads. You want it to be as close to those beads as possible, and you want it to be right in that space between that first and second bead. Once you've got it in a good position, pull that thread through, bringing the knot of that needle into the back of the felt. Sometimes you'll find that you need to readjust your thumb as you're working on your piece. This will make sure that your beads stay nice and tight. When you're ready to move on, you're going to continue tacking down this stitch by placing your tacking needle on the right hand side of those beads in the exact same space. You're looking for the spot on the right hand side of the beads between the first and the second bead. Pull it through and the thread itself should disappear. Now you are ready to move on to your next tacking stitch. Instead of every single bead, you're going to be doing a tacking stitch every two beads. Now you're aiming for the space between the third and the fourth bead, but on the left hand side. Once you find that, you're going to go ahead and pull it through like you've already done before. Next, you're going to come back down on the right hand side like you've done before. Pull that through. And now you're ready for some new beads. As you work, you want to make sure that your stitches are completely parallel. I just stitched between the third and the fourth bead and the first and the second bead. You will continue tacking down every two beads. Go ahead and put down your tacking needle and pick back up your stringing needle. You need to pick up more beads so you can continue working. I like to pick up approximately 10 beads at a time. It keeps me from having to go back to the bowl often. You may have noticed that I am left-handed. If you are right-handed, you might be holding your tacking bead in the other hand. The instructions work either way. Continue along the outline until you are completely finished with the outline. I'm going to be stopping here so I can tell you the next step.
how to finish a line of beads. At some point, you'll need to tie off your threads. This might be because you need to change color, change spaces that you're working on in your piece, or that you're running out of thread and need to add more thread to one of your needles. You want to make sure that your tacking thread is nice and tight. You can see that I have tacked down that second to the last bead and I've got one free floating bead. You may have two free floating beads depending on when your last stitch was. Go ahead and take your stringing needle and push it through at the end of those beads. You want to make sure that it is tight enough that they lay tight but that it is also loose enough that they do not arch up when you push the needle through. Pull through that thread and then go ahead and flip over your entire piece. Now you're just going to tie a simple knot. This knot is done by taking the first step of tying your shoes. You want to repeat this three or four times so that the knot is nice and strong. After you've done so, you can clip off your threads, restring your needles if you need to, and start again. Now let's talk about filling in your piece. Let's pretend that I have finished my navy blue outline. You're going to take another color of bead and fill in each petal. Whatever way you decide to fill in your design, it should be informed by the shape of your design. You can use that inside vertical line to fill out the rest of the petal in vertical lines. You could also use the arch shape of the top of the petal and fill in the rest of the petal with arches. Or you could use the outside line here. You could do some combination of the two. However, if this is your first piece, I would highly recommend sticking to one pattern. I really like this arches pattern. For the outside petals, you could do many different things as well. You could mimic the entire shape of the petal going in and working in with your beads as you fill in the piece until you get to your last bead here in the center. You could use the curve on the right side of this right petal. You can also use this inside curve. However you decide to fill your piece, I would recommend making each of your outside petals the same and your inside petals the same so that they are nice and symmetrical. Let's look at another piece that I'm working on. As you can see, my filling is informed by the design at the top of my piece. As you work down, you want to make sure that there's not space between your beads. You want them to be nice and tight. See how solid they look? After you're done beading, you want to have an adult spread a very, very thin layer of E6000 on your backing piece. After the E6000 is spread on that backing piece nice and lightly, you're going to take your beaded design and put the back of the beaded design onto the E6000 glue. I would recommend putting wax paper behind your felt and on top of your felt so that if any glue seeps through, it won't ruin anything else that it's touching. You're going to want to place something heavy on top of your project so that the glue is held together tightly. I would recommend using a book to hold those firmly together and let this dry for a couple of days. Once your piece is dried, you're going to want to cut out your piece. You want to make sure to leave enough room on the outside of your piece. The reason for this is you may have some stitches and threads that are further out than the beads. If you accidentally snip one of them, it will be very, very hard to fix and you might ruin your piece. Leave plenty of room. I would suggest leaving even more room than I am here. Trim up any edges that need to be trimmed to make it look nice and clean. The backing on my earrings here is leather, so it makes it a little harder to cut than yours will be. Once you are finished trimming out your project, you will have plenty of room along the outside of your beaded piece to stitch it onto whatever you'd like. That way you can use it as a patch. 
Congratulations and thank you so much for joining me and learning about beading.